was it was uh, it was fascinating to me, as I said, to watch this because it hit me upside the head. Even though I say, as I instinctively knew this, uh, that uh, all of the top tier candidates, because of these questions, see, there's always a silver lining in everything. There's always an upside. Uh, some of you may not think of this as an upside or a silver lining, but the um, the genuine moderate as opposed to conservative. Uh, aspects of three of the top tier, four of the top tier candidates were on full-fledged display. Last night there was one candidate who uh, did not display any moderateness or liberalism or uh, have any of, uh, of of his past forays into those areas displayed, and that candidate was Fred Thompson. Now, I, this is not an endorsement. I'm, I, you know I don't endorse during primaries. I'm just pointing out I, these are things I notice. And I've told you during the course of this whole campaign year that one of the things that's bothering me, I'm a Reagan conservative, and I believe conservatism, it's in my soul and it's in my heart. And I know it is the best way for us to manage our affairs, to ensure the pros- most prosperity for the most, to continue our freedom uh, to protect our country, conservatism sees people and sees potential. Liberalism looks at people and sees victims. Liberalism looks at people and sees incompetence, and we got to help them out and keep them forever dependent so we'll always have power. Conservatives don't want to use the government to empower themselves. They want to get government out of the way to empower other people. So, to me, it matters. Uh, and, and we've got a, a campaign now where most of the candidates are not genuine conservatives. They may be saying they are. Uh, but in their past, they have done some things that are not conservative in any way, shape, manner, or form. Uh, and I think a lot of those things are being overlooked, even by friends of mine in the conservative media, because the obsession's Hillary. Well, we've got to have somebody who can beat Hillary. Uh, and we can't have the perfect candidate. And so we got to we got to make a choice here based on who who is best equipped to win and, and beat Hillary. Well, I understand that. Uh, and I'm whoever the nominee is, I'm going to support them, so don't misunderstand here. But I don't like seeing conservatism uh, being watered down as the way it's defined. Uh, I don't want people who are not conservative being said to be representatives of the new conservatism. There is no new conservatism. There is conservatism, and you either are or you aren't. You can be 80%, but it depends on what the other 20% are. And I'm just telling you that last night, uh, uh, it was Huckabee and Rudy and Mitt Romney, uh, because of these questions, were all faced with the uh, the uh, reality, and everybody watching saw it, that they've got some uh, governance in their pasts uh, that is not conservative. And this is something that uh, I, it just it just hit me. While everybody's talking about Fred Thompson, well, he's too lazy, he's too, uh, he's too lackadaisical, he doesn't seem to have a whole lot of energy. and so, uh, Fine and dandy, I'm not going to argue with people and your perceptions about attitudes and so forth. I will say this, I don't, I don't think uh, anybody would get into this mess uh, running for the president to the media anal and all of these things. I mean, it's, you can't imagine what these people go through. You wouldn't want to go through it. And I can't imagine somebody would put themselves through it if they really don't want it. And one of the arguments about Fred Thompson is, well, I can't see the fire in his belly. Well, uh, he's got a different personality than the others. We'll just have to see how all this uh, all this shakes out.